Good morning, everybody. How are we? Good, good, good. Empower yourself, transform your life. This is the divine principle. It's a, an overview of my work. It's who I am as a human being. It's who I am as a teacher, as an author, as a musician. Um, I would invite that you go to my website and look at this every day when you start your daily uh, morning intention. Uh, I promise you, I'm confident that if you adhere to this, this particular divine principle, um, it will create your day for you. And I find myself deviating from my feel-good space all the time, and I always revert back to this particular principle. Fear contracts, love expands. Fear works from outside to inside. Love from inside to outside. Fear is the taker. It draws everything into itself and gives nothing. Fear takes what it can, when it can, to feed a hunger that can never be satisfied. Fear creates judgment, which creates separation. All that love does is give. It nourishes itself, yet has infinite leftovers to offer everyone and everything. Love is never hungry. Love creates acceptance, which creates unity. Love is a fountain of wealth that is endless, eternal. Today my talk is spiritual liberation through passion and sincerity. Passion and sincerity. Everybody say that with me. Passion, passion and sincerity. <laughs> spiritual liberation for me means to be free, to do what I want, who I want to do it with, and for however long. And I don't have to answer to anybody. But it, for me, it really means releasing my consciousness from my body and exploring myself in such a way that I can travel the universe to watch a star being born, visit with other beings, whether you believe in other worldly beings or whether you call them celestials. But spiritual liberation for me is truly becoming free, having the faculties, having the power, having the will to become free. I mean, that's what we're doing here today, right? And that's not, is that not the reason why everyone goes to church, to become spiritually liberated? And I've found that passion and sincerity has been my formula. There are six billion plus people on the planet. So there are basically six billion plus, plus pathways to spirit. Though they may be Christians or Buddhists or Hindu. What will create your liberation quicker is your passion and your sincerity. That is the common denominator I've found through all religion. Though there are formal ways of doing things in your spiritual practice and I support those. But could it possibly be as easy as just being passionate? For me, passion is the active. It's doing something with every fiber of your being. How did you say that today? Passion is not knowing whether you're working or playing. <laughs> and sincerity is the passive. It's the humility. It's the inaction. I mean, it's fair to say the divine principle is made up of three parts. The first part is recognize, seeing God everywhere all the time. The second part is once you begin to integrate that process, is plugging into the God system here. And the third part is having the tools that you need to manifest your life. And when I mean manifest, I don't mean building or going to work. I'm talking about truly becoming a master at willing your life with mere intention. Questions for life. Ever since I was a child, I had this insatiable curiosity. I was hungry. I had an appetite for knowledge, for information, for wisdom. At a very young age, I had questions that would seep into my consciousness and they actually became a bothersome. They would not leave me alone. They wanted answers immediately. They, were, they, were, they wanted the answers to me. Little did I realize those questions would become the unfoldment of my life. My father, when I was in early teens, would take me fishing overnight to the Gulf of Mexico in this camp boat he had. And I would love, I love doing this, but I would really look forward to um, bedtime because I would go on top of this little deck and sprawl out this sleeping bag and put my hands behind my head and gaze up at the stars, gaze up at infinity, at God. And those questions started to play out in my mind. And the first question that came to me 
I, I, I've asked a question many times before, and I'm sure we've all asked these questions I'm going to put to you. And these questions, though they are simple in their form, depends on your passion and your sincerity that you put behind the question. The bigger, the more profound, and the quicker the answer will manifest in your life. One particular night I was on the camp boat looking up at the stars. So this question comes in, and I passionately started asking this question. And I found myself not really leaving my body, per se, that's never really not accurate, falling further into myself as a spirit. I was removed from what I know as physical reality. I was taken to a waiting place. And this waiting place is the place where souls that are about to be born hang out. And there was an amazing excitement and anticipation as you would look towards the front of the line as these new souls would go down metaphorically towards earth to be born. But in the back, there was another metaphor. Uh, there were people, come, souls coming up, some would join the line, some would go to another place entirely. When it was my turn, I went down and I found myself back on the camp boat. And for a young boy, that was a pretty intense experience. Asking the question, where did I come from? We entertain the idea that we come from our mother and father. We really come through our mother and father. So they're the conduits from which we come from the spiritual realm to this physical place. How many people would know the answer to why you're here? Do you absolutely know, Crooks? Everyone? Many more people? Why you're here? I am here to be blissful. We are here to be happy and blissful. And when you are that, those people who are not are affected by your light. When you are happy, when you're doing what you love, you are in direct alignment with Source. If God is this being of love, then it makes sense to me that when you do what you love, you're in alignment. It's a very, very simple formula. It may be practical. Well, Keith, you don't understand. I can't do that right now. Yes, I do understand. I understand the practical way. But are you taking on your passion at all? Can you start in small doses and eventually five years from now, you can see yourself doing what you love and be better at it than anyone else? Who am I? Often when I do these talks, I ask the audience, please point to yourself. Point to yourself. Point to God. That's pretty much the spiritual lesson that you will find at the heart of every religion. The difference between what we know as ourselves and our, our, the Creator, our higher self or God, is the stuff that we have in the way. All that stuff we have in the way. I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm an uncle. I'm all these things. I'm a musician. I'm a writer. These are really just facets of who I am. But the wholeness of who I am is spirit. Where am I going? Before you can ever really get where you're going. Where you're going meaning consciously. And where you desire to be. So you have to understand truly. In a heartfelt uh, felt space. Where you come from. Who you are. Why you are here. And who you are. And that will lay the groundwork for the rest of your life. So you can walk your path more effortlessly and easily. Someone recently submitted this to me, a friend of mine. She said, the greatest tragedy in life is dying and not knowing why you were here. The creative principle. You were created in the image and likeness or similitude of God. I used to think, being raised Catholic, I used to think that God created me to somewhat look like Him. Believing that God was human only. But now I know that what this means is God created us in His image, His imagination, but yet His likeness. As we think, everything you think, everything you think, gives form to what is to be manifested in your life. Thought. It's the primary force in the universe. Everything began with thought. Your thoughts are either love-based or fear-based. Going back to the opening divine principle. It's like for myself, I have this mechanism that goes on inside and I cannot shut it off if I try. I'm always monitoring my thoughts. It's almost second nature. I don't do it on purpose anymore. 
It took me a while to get to that place. But I'm always tightening um, and refining myself. But I don't judge my fear-based thoughts. I don't. I just quietly dismiss them and tell them, thank you, I no longer need you in my life. Because we don't want to create a new problem. And that new problem would be the guilt that would happen for feeling bad for having those fear-based thoughts. And then we start compounding the issue, and actually that problem is worse than the initial one you had. Thought is that which gives form. Thought defines. It's like the chair you sit on. Someone had a thought. So it's created. Thought would be likened to, if God was a stereo, your thoughts would be the frequency. And as you go through your stereo, you say, I choose that station there. You have made a choice, a definitive choice, for what you want to happen. Your feeling would be likened to the volume on the radio station. What happens when you turn the volume up? The music gets louder. It's a metaphor for your life manifesting quicker, bigger. Feeling guarantees the manifestation of your thought. Growing up, I've always had a fear of big dogs. I don't know why, but I did. You walk into a room and there's a dog. First thing is a thought, dog. Second is the feeling, oh no. And he starts reacting to what I am sticking out. So it's very important you become aware of your thoughts and feelings. Your feelings will also tell you when you're aligned with God. Remember, there is only a source of well-being in the universe. There is not a source of non-well-being. And you will know that you are aligned simply by how you feel. By how you feel. You can tell the thoughts that you have been thinking by how you feel. To become a master at creating, and I'm getting proficient at it. When you want to purposefully create your life, as you go out through your day, if you find yourself deviating from your feel-good space, find a reason to get back into it. Pull out a picture of someone you love, listen to a song that moves you inside. Whatever the reason, get back into alignment. And then launch your thoughts for that which, that you want to call to you. Those things in your life that you truly desire to see show up for yourself. Always get back into alignment by feeling good. Feeling is your barometer to real power. Action. Anchors your creative energy. Brings your goal to you. You looking in the newspaper for a job, you may not find that job. But you taking the action Create, it begins to solidify the more subtle energies from thought and feeling into a physical way. It begins to anchor your creative energy. Action is your passion in motion. 